So launched a new service, pretty excited about it. We're going to talk to you today about VPC traffic mirroring, right? So I guess let's start super high level here. Yeah. Uh, what is traffic mirroring? Why would people want to use it? So, so, so traffic yeah. mirroring is basically the ability to grab the traffic that's on, on your instance and be able to forward it to uh, one of the tools so that you can analyze the traffic. And you're going to analyze the traffic for multiple reasons. You can do compliance inspections. You can try to identify threats that are going on on your network. Uh, or you can do storage for forensics analysis. Right. So just to add to that, um, as our customers have uh, pretty complicated infrastructures or you know, production deployment running in VPC, uh, they, they need to know what's happening in the network in order to keep that network safe. Mm -hmm. They need to keep an eye out on uh, unusual traffic pattern or content that would signify a network intrusion or they would let the content that would let them know that a workload has been compromised. So traffic mirroring is the feature that actually allows customers to um, capture the traffic on the EC2 instances, on their workloads in VPC, and send it to the out-of-band out of band monitoring tool for threat detection, content inspection, and things like that. Okay, great. So people might be familiar with this concept if they've been doing something like packet capture at their on-premises data center, something like that. This is similar idea. Very similar to the fiber tap uh, in, in an on-premise data center, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what makes VPC traffic mirroring unique? What se separates it from some of the, the other uh, agents and tools that might exist? Right. So, so I'm going to start there. Yeah. And um, I would say that first, this is native to Amazon VPC. It means that you no longer need to deploy a custom agent or a third party agent in your VPC, uh, which, could, which could bring some vulnerabilities to your network. Okay. So you no longer need to do that because it's native. The second thing is that it is highly scalable. Um, currently, without traffic mirroring, you have to deploy an agent, a custom agent, in each one of your VPCs for each one of the tools that you are using, your security or monitoring tools that you're using. And uh, you can imagine when you have 20 to 40 tools on your network, and you have tens, hundreds, sometimes we have customers with thousands of VPCs, it is very difficult, very complex to, to scale. Mm -hmm. uh, traffic mirroring really solves these two issues. Yeah, yeah. and to add to uh, Tom's point, right? So simplified operation is one thing. Um, there's another aspect there. We actually improve the security posture as well uh, in VPC environment. So um, a typical agent um, that, that until now customers had to use or install uh, on their EC2 instance would run on user space. Um, and um, you know, some of our security conscious customers don't really want to accept any traffic, um, uh, especially if, if the workload is already compromised. Um, you know, when you have access to user space and agent is running in user space, you can tamper the traffic right very easily. Uh, with traffic mirroring, you actually uh, we uh, replicate the traffic at the network interface of the EC2 instance, okay. which means that. Um, from user space, once this feature is enabled on the network interface, from user space, you cannot tamper with the packet. So you can be assured that what packets are coming in and out of a, to a network interface is what you're actually monitoring. Okay, great. So even yeah. if a system was somehow compromised, you would still know that the network data, the packets you were looking at, were actually the real packets and not something that had been manipulated in users. Absolutely, it's a high fidelity data that you can monitor. You can, you can monitor using out of band tools uh, so that you, know, you can do your retrospection analysis or, or forensic analysis, behavioral analysis, all that stuff, yeah. Okay, great. <clears throat> and I was, I was talking with someone a little bit earlier that was saying that this uh, pairs nicely with the, the UDP launch from yesterday. Um, which is application load balancer now supports uh, UDP as a protocol, which is really, really exciting. Uh, do you have any idea how those two things relate? Yeah, so, so you, know, you know, we are, we are glad that um, UDP is supported on NLB. Mm -hmm. um, so one cool thing that um, this feature support is that uh, you can run your monitoring appliances or security appliances 
behind um, a network load balancer in auto scaling group. So, which means that as as your VPC scale, as your workload scale, you can scale your monitoring appliance up and down uh, in a very elastic manner. So, UDP is very important. The reason UDP is very important is that um, uh, when we mirror the packet, um, we actually encapsulate it uh, uh, with a VXLAN header. That um, that is a UDP uh, in nature. So, that UDP packet can be sent to a network load balancer and hence UDP support and NLB was a, a must have for us. That sounds really cool. Yeah. So you, you could actually take your, your mirrored traffic and direct that to a specific set of applications through the load balancer if you wanted to. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. Absolutely, and when we take the traffic, we can also forward the traffic to, um, as I mentioned before, security and monitoring tools. At launch, from day one, we have 19 partners who are supporting this, this feature. And most of them are available already on Marketplace. Okay. So that means that chances are that no matter what your tool, what tool you are using today, you're probably using one of those tools. Mm -hmm. And you can already implement traffic mirroring. Yeah, and that, that's super awesome too because there's a lot of existing systems that can do cool stuff with this data. And the yep. thing so far that has been hard is been making that data available to the partners so that they can give you insights on it. Now that yep. it's native and baked in to VPC, it's a lot easier to get that data and use some of these partners to help turn it, that information into insight. Yep. I think it's a game changer for these partners as well as for our customers because now customers can very easily deploy those partner solutions because they don't need to have those, those custom agents and scalability issues. And so in the end, it's really our partners who are going to benefit from this because they're going to find it very easy to, uh, to bring value to our customers. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. So if it's a tough question and you don't know how to answer, that's fine. fine. Just, just uh, don't swing at that one. But let's say, um, is there any use case for this b beyond security? That, that could be interesting. Like, is there a reason a customer would want to inspect their network traffic without having a good security Im uh, imperative to do so? Uh, absolutely. Um, so security is one of the use case, uh, but um, uh, a lot of time um, our customers want this kind of capability to uh, troubleshoot their applications as well. So when you have microservices and multiple, multiple applications in your VPC talking to each other, um, you know, you want to test it out before you roll it to the production, or if there is any problem, you want to see how the packets are coming in and out of your applications, uh, so that you can figure out the, the the blind spots or the choke point in your infrastructure and and uh, remediate that. So, um, making sure that you know your applications are working as it, they're supposed to, um, you know, having a packet capture is very important. So, troubleshooting diagnostic diagnostic is is one uh, key use case for this um, you know feature. Second is compliance and record keeping. So a lot of our customers, specifically in financial service industries and, and in the public sector, um, have the requirement for monitoring uh, you know, any traffic that goes with beyond a certain boundary and they want to monitor that uh, for, and, and to an extent also capture it and keep store it in their local database or, mm -hmm. or, or storage. So th that's another use case they can use uh, traffic mirroring for. Okay, cool, so sounds like it can help with some debugging, some uh, network architecture decisions, and some network optimization as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what's something that our audience might be interested in knowing about VPC traffic mirroring that we haven't gotten to yet? So, so there's one, one thing, you know, um, after we um, launched this feature, uh, the, the feedback that we have gotten, um, one interesting feedback that I want to share with everyone, um, you can do pretty cool things with uh, this feature. First is you can actually capture your DNS traffic uh, in VPC. Uh, some are calling it as a pot of gold for security engineers because you know a lot of these things can be caught when you are able to look at the DNS traffic. So um, day one, VPC traffic out of uh, uh, a network interface on EC2 instance is supported. So, so that's one thing. Um, second is... Um, you can have uh, various deployment architecture with this uh, 
feature. So you could have uh, a central InfoSec VPC where you can send your mirror traffic from various other VPCs and have one central VPC doing monitoring and analysis for you. You could also have it in shared VPC so that you have like one subnet where your all monitoring and appliances are deployed and the resources from the different uh, organization within that VPC can be can send the mirror traffic to that. So uh, the bunch of uh, deployment options that make it really easy to fit your needs, fit your organizational structure, um, you know, when it comes to kind of having a security team monitoring and then other teams kind of, uh, you know, allowing them to monitor traffic for compliance reasons. Okay. And because this is native and because the, the mirroring happens at the, the network interface itself, it means that it should have no performance impact whatsoever when it comes to your instance itself, right? Yeah, there are no CPU needs. penalties um, like, um, unlike uh, agent running in the user space, yeah. Cool. Well, do you have a, a bit of a demo you're going to show us today? Yeah, um, I have a quick demo that I can kind of show. Um, So um, I have a, um, a simple demo here. I have a web server where I want to monitor um, you know, all HTTP traffic coming to my web server. Mm -hmm. So uh, traffic mirroring is pretty simple to set up. So um, you, know, you start by creating filter. So I, I go and uh, from start from scratch, create a filter, uh, give it a name. Um, you know, traffic mirroring filters can be used um, uh, uh, one filter can be used by multiple sessions, so it's it's a good idea to give the right tags and the name. Uh, here I've created uh, a name tag given a description. I'm actually creating the filter rule where I'm saying uh, traffic on TCP port 80 coming from anywhere, going from, uh, to anywhere, um, I want to capture that. Um, you can actually have filters based on your inbound and outbound traffic. So in, in this case, I just have my inbound traffic um, that I want to capture. Um, and then uh, there are some, some optional features like Amazon DNS or some services that you can uh, create. Now, the second step is I create my target. Uh, you can um, essentially create a target um, on an EC2 instance. You can run an AMI from Marketplace from all the partners that Tom talked about, or you can have your open source tool running on those EC2 instances. So here I'm creating um, a traffic mirroring target. Uh, I have to specify the network interface where this met traffic will be sent. So I'm uh, looking at the ENI ID or the network interface ID of that target, specifying that as a target uh, ID. And uh, you know that's it. So I, my target is now created. Uh, now, the last, last uh, step is that I bind this source and target uh, using a session. So I create a session here, um, give it a description, um, and specify my source where I want to mirror the traffic from, specify the target where my traffic needs to go, and specify some of the attributes uh, um, that, that we offer, like packet truncation and things like that. And at this point, uh, a traffic mirror session is created. Now, let's take a look. Um, I have a, a web server on top. Uh, this is where, let me start the web, you know, the web service here. HTTP daemon has been started, uh, and here is a very rudimentary test web page. Uh, the target, I'm actually just using a TCP dump uh, tool, and I have a tool where TCP dump is running, and every time I open the browser or actually go to this URL, I see my HTTP packets being mirrored to this target. So this is as simple as it can get to monitor your traffic on a particular workload in your VPC. That's very cool. Those, those filters remind me of like a normal packet sniffing application. I might use like Wireshark setting up filters, set the port, set what I'm interested in, what sort of traffic, use it to debug. Absolutely, and see, this is where you can actually create uh, extract only traffic that you are interested in monitoring. So it, to, to my earlier point of debugging and troubleshooting, this actually becomes really handy uh, because you can specify which traffic on which port, which IP address you want to monitor and, and see how things are um, you know, going between the applications. That's very cool. That's uh, significantly fewer steps to set up than similar solutions I've used yeah. in the past. Very, very cool. What else should, should our audience know about VPC traffic mirroring? I feel like we've covered a lot of the benefits, what makes it different. It's you know, no performance costs, it's native. Uh, you don't have to install any agents, so it's easier to scale up. And, and it's available right away, uh, uh, also available from the partners on yeah. Marketplace. So that's, I think that's essential, because traffic mirroring in itself is just a function mm -hmm. that we get. 
but to get value from that function, you need to have those analysis, uh, forensics, or storage tools that are going to grab the traffic and, and make it valuable to your customers. Okay, great. So if people want to learn more and get started using VPC Traffic Mirroring right now, where would you send them to? So we have, we have multiple resources. First, the VPC page, uh, aws.amazon.com forward slash VPC. That's the first thing to use. Um, then we're going to have, uh, pretty soon on YouTube, we're going to have a recording session on uh, traffic mirroring. Uh, so one hour session where you can really dig deep into what's going on with traffic mirroring. And uh, we're also going to continue to have forums and discussions around the topic. But most of all, reach out to your account managers, uh, reach out to your technical experts. Uh, we'll be happy to help you and uh, assist you in deploying traffic mirroring. Cool. And is there any sort of free tier or free trial so that people can try before they turn it on for real? So um, the pricing for this feature is very simple. Um, and um, in, in, for example, in US regions, you can turn on traffic mirroring uh, on, uh, on a specific network interface on an EC2 instance, and you'll be actually charged 1.5 cents per hour. So okay. um, it's pretty low, uh, one-tenth of a, a pen, you know, essentially a very low cost. You can monitor your traffic. Um, so th that is essentially the pricing structure for this feature. Okay, so yeah. if people wanted to try it out, a way for them to do that would just to be to create a filter that captures very little traffic, set it up, play around, see if it's going to work for you, and right. then increase the scope of the traffic. Right, and capture. customers are not charged for mirror traffic. It's an hourly uh, charge on per mirror source, and that's pretty much it. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, you can actually start playing with it right now. Um, we have it live, uh, it's available in 15 regions uh, as we speak. Great. Well, it sounds like this is something that's super useful for our customers, our partners, as a developer who would probably misconfigure networks a few right. times in my life. Uh, this is very helpful for the people who help me unwind those mistakes. So, seems like it's a really, really cool feature. I'm excited to hear about it. And it's also really interesting to me to learn about how, how the way we architect things for the cloud, I mean, as, as the cloud provider, enables us to do some of this really cool stuff. Like, if, if you're managing your own data center, I'm not even sure how you would go about doing this without incurring some performance cost. It right. doesn't seem, yeah. you know, it's just really, really awesome to hear about what a place like AWS can enable. Right. Really cool. All right, well, I think we're about wrapping up then. Any other last bits of advice for our audience that wants to play around with Traffic Marion? You want to start? I, I would say just try it and see if it works for you, see if it works with your tools. Uh, I really think it's going to help you deploy your security solutions in the network, in the cloud, just like you have them in the network right now. Right, and yeah, uh, give it a try. It's available in 15 regions. We, uh, we would love to hear your feedback. We are actively listening on forums. Uh, Twitter, so your your feedback will uh, will will be, will be taken very seriously, and we are excited to actually um, you know um, f f excited to actually get you this feature so that you can try it out, debug, and make your network secure. Great. Yeah. Well, Tom Anoop, thank you very much for joining me. I'm Brandon. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.